Hello and welcome back to the only show filled with scoundrels, laser brains, and stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herders. And we talk about Star Wars, too, but not today. I'm Max. I'm Matt. And I'm Luke. And this is Force for Thought. Presents More for Thought. More for Thought! It sounds like, like we forget every time, but that is the actual. I recovered nicely. I yeah. definitely but, did forget. Yeah, we do. We, <laughs> you, we do forget every time. But it is force for thought presents more for thought. Yes, but we just forget that part <laughs> to yes. say it. So yeah. one of yeah. usually true, true. The other one of us says that, then you exclaim that uh, as well, like you're so, at a bar. Uh, today's episode, uh, we're doing something a little bit different, a little unusual. Uh, we're yeah, we do our, things a little different here. <laughs> we're putting our podcasting skills to the test. Uh, uh, we're going to be practicing some off-the-cuff banter and critical thinking. Uh, there's a common debate uh, strategy where you have to learn the arguments of your opponents, which is why today we are doing our least favorite sitcoms ever. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> this, is that why you did... Wait. Are you, no, okay. I you was guys. like, God, this is going to be so much harder to debate our favorite sitcoms no, as our least we're, favorite. We're actually just doing our five favorite sitcoms. I thought about doing that, but I thought that was going to be way too much work. Oh, yeah. Um, and this is so much more fun now. I feel... Oh, man. The reason I was... Uh, I, I went over the list beforehand to make sure that we didn't have any duplicates, and the reason that this is interesting is because our uh, number ones were actually a three-way tie. <laughs> really? We all had the same number one, and I had to give it to someone. I assume that should, was should we me. Start there? <laughs> <laughs> no, we should have started there. We should end there. So I wanted to I wanted to point that out because when I handed Luke his list and he saw that, he was pretty upset. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, my number one got eliminated and my six through two moved up a slot. So that's the only one that had any overlap. Yes, I had to figure out a way of doing it. And basically what I decided was uh, Luke's number six was... Better than Matt's number six? Yes. Matt's because six. Because it's in one of your... I'm trying to think of how to explain it. Yeah. yeah. Matt's it's... six and seven were eliminated, so Matt's next available one was his eighth option, mm. whereas ours were our sixth. Okay. That so seems that's, fair. That's why that happened. Anyway. Great critical so... thinking. You're already putting it to use. <laughs> I try. Um, so today we are doing our five favorite... Okay, I hit record. Uh, today we're doing <laughs> our better five, safe than sorry. I would rather you check sitcoms. that a hundred times. <laughs> we're doing our five favorite sitcoms. We're gonna start with our number fives. And Matthew, I'll start with you. And as a precursor, we all know sitcoms. I knew are you're gonna multi- have a precursor. That's why I wanted to as go to a, you first. As a precursor, what do you think we, over under at eleven sitcoms that Matt actually talks about instead of the five on his list. We all know. <laughs> Over. <laughs> yes, over. <laughs> I'll take that bet. Uh, you know, we all know a sitcom is a multicam show uh, that is consisting of 20 minutes to a half hour. Obviously, we're taking uh, this a little bit differently. And so sitcom, you know, I think is an appropriate word for this as well. Um, but just to check the boxes off, we are doing animated shows and we are also doing, um, you know, one uh, one camera uh, productions as well. So technically, it's just a half hour comedy is, is what we're looking at um, as well. Mm. What? I have one that's not a half hour comedy. Yeah, mostly half hour comedies. We'll just our com- or mm, now I can't remember. I don't know. Which, what is it? Well, we'll, we'll yeah, I know. I'm just trying. We'll I'm just trying to make him slip up left and right today. Um, so my number five. But he never gets me. I don't actually. They call me Mr. Sticky because I never slip. <laughs> <laughs> This is a good episode so far. Yes. This is great. Um, so I wrote down my top thirty. So I'm gonna go through the other ones real quick. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I did write down my top thirty. And there's you a did. lot. It was of... a completely separate list when I was going through them. You had a completely separate one through twenty labeled alt. I was like, oh my god. Well, just I knew there was gonna be potentially. I, I also, to be fair, thought we were doing our top ten. So then I figured, well, in my top ten, there's gonna be at least three. That would move, presumably. So mm-hmm. that's why I did the thirty because I was like, I, I don't know how many of these. Um, but anyway. Um, I like a lot of TV shows, but I think my number five show, um, favorite comedy of all time, is the uh, Fox animated show Bob's Burgers. Um, Bob's Burgers, to me, has a lot of heart. It is also uh, a musical show. Um, it's it's a musical? I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, 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 I, I, I think we've talked about this. Maybe I jumped about it. But, Luke, you would, I think, love this show because it is a lot of musical elements within it. Not every episode is like a musical, but they sing a lot throughout the, the show itself. Um, you know, it's going on. It's... 13th season now um they just also had a movie but i i love bob's burgers i think the animation is fun um it started off the first three four seasons are pretty crude and then it tapers off it's definitely a family show but it kind of pushed those bounds um i love those characters and i think a lot of things that i like within this within my list is 
are shows that have are funny but also have a lot of heart to them as well. And I think Bob Bur- Bob's Burgers really uh, teeters that line and is uh, cutting edge in, in in that sense. I've never seen it. Max? I have seen it. I think it's fantastic. I haven't seen all of it. Mm -hmm. And there's actually quite a few when I was going through my list. I was making like a master like top 10 or whatever because, you know, I was waiting for uh, things that would have to get knocked off and stuff like that. And I had a couple on there that I had just never finished. And I was like, Mm. I I can't in good faith put those on my top 10 if I've never even finished them. That's true. Uh, I didn't think of Bob's Burgers, but there were a couple other ones that I think we'll talk talk about, um, if not in the top five, some honorable mentions. I'm excited um, for those as well. But that's a kind of a side uh, <laughs> side conversation for later, I guess. I have seen Bob's Burgers, and I like it. I have not seen the movie. Did you see the movie? Yeah, I, I like the movie. I think we talked about this in one of our first for thoughts, whether it comes out before this or after this. Spoiler. Um, but I think it was a great movie. It It's one of those things that it doesn't seem to raise the stakes too high, where it doesn't seem like it's not the show anymore. It just is self-contained on Ocean Avenue, which is where they live, and uh, Wonder Wharf, which is the wharf at the end uh, with all um, with all the rides and stuff, and that it kind of takes place within those settings, and so it feels very much like the show, but just with an hour and 40 minutes. Um, and the animation style is a little different, but besides that, everything else is um, right on for it. So I love, the, I love the movie, too. Nice. All right. Uh, Luke, number five. My fifth favorite TV or er, funny TV show. Modern Family. Oh, it's a, um, that's a sitcom. That's, yeah, 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 it is It is a sitcom, but I didn't want to put that label on it. Because are the animated ones sitcoms, too? Uh, that's I, I wouldn't have necessarily said that. I asked Maxwell, and he said, yes, we are including animated, I mean, we're animation. we're including them, but you wouldn't yeah. say that like Bob's Burgers is a sitcom? No, it's a half-hour animated show. Okay. Um, Modern Family is a sitcom. Uh, one of my favorites. A lot of people say the quality dips down towards the later seasons, but I feel like that's just the stock thing that everyone says about every TV show. I don't think it dipped down I much. Agree. I mean, it naturally did because it was centered around kids for a while and a lot of the humor was around the family aspect. And then they do kind of have to write more aggressively or creatively in such a way to make these now adults still live and orient their lives around their parents and mm-hmm. aunts and uncles who you know most people leave the nest and have a life of their own you still follow all these characters into well into adulthood i mean the show went for like i want to say 12 seasons um it's 11 seasons 11 thank yeah. you and so you know the even the youngest character he's a full-grown adult by the end and yeah. so i think it's still good by the end i do prefer the beginning seasons um but it's still very consistent and i love it yeah, consistency is a big thing for me, too, and I know the list, so I'll say that it's going to be something that we're going to be talking about, that at least I will be bringing up a lot. Um, I agree. I think Modern Family is incredibly consistent. I had it. Um, it wasn't in my top five, uh, but it was definitely on my list, and I agree. I think as the kids got older, the show did a really good job of pivoting those stories to incorporate uh, the kids as older characters really well. Yeah. And the humor, I think, is top-notch, and I don't think the humor has ever, like, fallen off or no. got less funny or anything like yes. that i hated modern family for such a long time in college you had the dvds uh yes as I well did. to date us oh, back God, then that's how old you guys are yep and um so i, I but i never understood that because that was one of the only things that we that in big bang theory which i still actively dislike but um modern family I just never liked it i also think maybe there was a, a slight grudge of the fact that steve carell never won for the office uh for his emmys but everyone else in front modern family did uh, you know, and, and I'll I beat him. Know that. But I, I actually last year um, re- watched Modern Family for the first time, and I absolutely loved it. It's my number sixteen on my list. Um, so or get that over going already. Uh, but I, <laughs> I absolutely loved Modern Family. I mean, all the characters are great. The only one thing I dislike in the show is that uh, Haley does not end up with Andy. She ends up with her other dumb, dumb boyfriend. Dylan. No, yes. I love Dylan no. so much Andy, more Andy. Oh, Andy is so I mean, good. He's better for her, and he was a nicer person, and like, if they were real characters, real people, yeah. like, and I knew Haley in real life, I'd want her to end up with Andy, but yeah. for the show, it's so much funnier to her, for her to be with Dylan. They also, I mean, I feel like majority feels like Andy, and that everyone, so much so that that's like the new Pitch Perfect movie is centered around those two actors. <laughs> falling in love and being in a relationship i was like oh yes redemption uh but it's only because um andy uh what's I, I can't think of his name um the guy from workaholics my god the very famous guy the most famous of the troop adam divine yes exactly mm-hmm. that guy he was filming workaholics season seven and the schedules overlap so they had to cut him so that's why he's not that's why they didn't end up together oh, that's too um, bad yes but anyway yes i love modern family it's it's so good it still holds up and you get the whole generation thing between um, I forget his name in the show now. Now I'm really flubbing this, but the Nolan, the the youngest 
you know, verse Luke. two. Luke, thank you. Hey. <laughs> uh, Some Luke, forgettable name. Yeah, Luke, all the way to, to Ed O'Neill. So uh, I think it's great. I like it when TV shows have a really good, like, uh, duo like that, um, mm-hmm. like Andy or Dylan. Which one is she going to get with? Yeah. And it's like you can choose, like, like oh, like Luke liked Dylan and you liked Andy. Like, sometimes TV shows don't do yeah. that. And it's like everyone's clearly like, okay, like you're, you're rooting for this person, right? Yeah. Like that happened a lot in... Uh, I'm fairly certain we're not going to talk about it, but I don't want to say it in case we are. What is it? Well, how do you get out of this conversation now, then? We're not going to. I'm not going to talk talk about about it. it. Okay. Uh, How I Met Your Mother did that a lot, where they, like, introduce these relationships, and you're just like, oh, like, is this going to work out? But then it's like, Mm -hmm. it wasn't, like, set up well enough to be, like, actually rooting for it. You know, you were just kind of like, okay, I I know he's going to end up with this other person. How I Met Your Mother is a great show. Over. Um, how much more is a great show, but it is one of those shows that, that for me, on our family, I was I was always told it was it kind of goes off the rails a little bit towards the end. The humor is funny, but it, the quality dips, and I do not think that it dips at all. Like I was expecting a change, but I enjoyed every single episode all the time. Where How Much Your Mother definitely should have ended with season six, and it goes until season nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like that. That I love the first four seasons of that. Mm-hmm. Once the captain and Zoe, the architect. Or no. Yeah, I forgot about that arc. Yeah. After that, that se- season six is not very good. And then after that, it's like Cal Penn is in there. And all of a sudden. What season was season six? Was that the one with the rubber duck tie? Ooh, I don't know. I think no, that's that was the one with Cal Penn. Because... Was it? That was later then? Mm-hmm. Was yeah. he only in one season, Cal Penn? Uh, I don't remember. But I remember he was that part was of the rubber duck tie stuff. I remember oh. seeing I like Cal Penn a lot too, duck. which sucks. I just don't like him in that show. The it's... season with the rubber duck tie i believe is the season that i started to fall off i to this day have not finished the show i know how it ends so you can I, spoil it but i remember because we you don't know how it ends no i do know how oh, it okay ends. i was like what the yeah but I I just, i've never seen it i've never gotten we, around to we it. were in college when it ended and we were both big fans of the show and then we yeah i think we same time um once he's with robin cal pens with robin and then barney's with robin it just feels like they're like what if we just mixed it up like rage well, it doesn't matter we'll talk about it we'll <laughs> um that brings me to me my number five my number five is malcolm in the middle i interesting hi i love malcolm in the middle so much it is so funny all the characters are great and i feel like it's kind of hard to do that with a show all about boys maybe it's because i come from a family of four boys so i i feel like there's like a weird relation there but i don't know i i always really liked it i think um hal brian cranston brian cranston yeah i don't know what's going on with this Uh, also someone's lying i don't know how if you know how procreating works but it's because we're not talking about star wars we're out of our element i know we actually don't know anything about anything else um but yeah brian cranston uh, uh, in a comedy role i mean that was like kind of like how he uh, he was in a comedy role before he ever did drama obviously but it was yeah yeah what's the other show he's in when he's a dentist everyone really likes that i'm sure we won't talk about (laughs) um Uh, breaking bad he's a chemistry (laughs) teacher but that's not a sitcom so we could talk about that look with the middle i i've never really watched i love the theme song it oh the theme song i could talk about the theme song by itself it's great have you is this who sings that they might be giants I, think Ooh, it's I don't know. Giants. Is this a more modern thing for you, or did you always? I don't think I knew that you liked ah, Malcolm in the Middle. That's right. No, I've always loved Malcolm. I did in the not Middle. know that about you. That's I crazy. I had that on DVD as well. Interesting. My, my my brother Mike loves Malcolm in the Middle as well. Has been trying to get me to watch it, but for some reason, it just makes me feel icky when I watch it. I don't know why. why? It makes me you feel like you don't. You never watched it. It's I great. watched it like on TV back in the day, but it just makes me feel like hot and 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 warm and uncomfortable because they're just like consistently tripping over each other. It feels like and and it's so stressful. Yeah, but that's their lives though. That's how they live. And that's part of the the charm and what makes it. I don't know. I I really like the humor in it, and that's another one too where I also feel like it never has like a like a dip in quality. Mm. I feel like it lasted the perfect amount of time and was consistent throughout. I, I think it gets a lot it, better. Funny, I think the kids were too young in the beginning for a lot of the comedy situations that they were trying to make. I work. can see that. So I think I think it got better as it went on. But I also like Malcolm in the Middle and Lois. I think is one of those characters that has the great dichotomy of like I watched it when I was younger. Obviously, you Matt won't have that benefit if you do choose to watch it. Mm-hmm. But like you hated Lois when you were younger because she was like. The Sick mom, of the mud, and, yeah. yeah, and she was uh, unfun. But now, when I rewatch it, it's like, damn, she really kept the, kept this family together. <laughs> yeah. Like Francis definitely needed to go to military school. All the decisions she made were grounded and realistic and responsible. She's a great character too. Who's the older Francis, and then what's the 
I can't remember his Reese? name. Is. Reese. Reese, Malcolm, and then Dewey. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I have watched it. And I then just, they have a, never... then there's another one, too. There's a fifth one. Yeah, they have another oh, baby, whoa. Jamie, later in life. Interesting. But they, oh, that was such a funny joke, though, because they made such a big deal about how they're all boys. And then I think it was like for multiple episodes, they never revealed the gender of Jamie. That's funny. But they called the baby Jamie, and that was like a big, like, cliffhanger. Name. I think yeah, that was like how the season ended, right? I don't remember that. That's funny. Everyone's wondering if it was going to be a boy or girl, and then they named it Jamie. And yeah, it was really funny. But I think they did later confirm that it was a boy. I think like later on. I mean, he's like four by the end of it. Yeah. He's, yeah. But I don't know how long, though. I mean, they, yeah. I feel like that was multiple episodes where that was lingering. Matt, number four. Did not see that coming. Um, Me neither. Number four for me. I I say that. I I really think I have the definitive list. With the exception of our number ones, I'm surprised that not more of mine got bumped. So far, it's a great great list. Um, For my number four, I think it is one of, it's not only one of my favorite comedies, it's one of my favorite shows of all time. That is Frasier. Frasier is so good. Um, If you haven't watched it, I urge you, guys to watch it or viewer to to watch it um do you actually think i would like it if i, I watched would, it i would i don't know because it it is it's like yes I, i'm gonna say i'm gonna say you would because it's one of those shows also that like you i have like cried at during and also laughed so hard mm-hmm. um because it gets it does get just it just I think it's uh, it's got a great family dynamic. The whole thing is Frasier, uh, you know, who's in Cheers, which is my number eight show of all time. Um, he's played, you know, that character, Kelsey Grammer's played that character for 24 years, a little more now since the reboot. But the whole thing is he moves back to Seattle, which is his hometown, uh, in order to take care of his dad, who is recently retired uh, police officer who got shot and is now kind of limping around and kind of adjusting to a later life basically sounds hilarious so funny <laughs> but the whole thing is he moves in with them and so it's this he's Frazier is a very stuck up guy who loves the arts and culture he's like a, he's a renowned psychiatrist and his dad is like you know a psychiatry beat cop. yeah that's fun um, <laughs> his dad's a beat cop so i love that dynamic and then it creates you a great my joke it was just the same as max's joke but worse I'm <laughs> no 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 it was good um but the, the dynamic and the characters are so good his brother niles uh the love interest daphne which is his uh dad's uh you know physical therapist uh there's the uh the character of roz and I don't know. All the characters work so well together, and it's a perfect melting pot um, that all these characters not only have to interact with Frasier, but can interact with each other and work out really well. Which is oddly odd for a sitcom. Uh, I think when you have you're able to have characters pair off each other, even if they're minor characters, um, you can have this doesn't make any sense to you, but you can have Bulldog be with Marty. It's like those characters have nothing to do with each other, but yet they end up having a dynamic. Uh, really well. If you had to watch one episode, I would offer the suggestion of Ham Radio, which is in season six. It's my favorite episode of Frasier. Uh, it is really funny. I, you, th- you say I'll like it based on everything you know about me, and we know each other pretty well, and our tastes obviously align heavily with Star Wars. Yes. But I will say the last thing that you recommended I watch was Squid Games The Challenge. It's so good. And I did watch it and I hated it. What? I did not think it was good at all. Oh my and God. I, I mean, are we going to talk about it? Is that on your list of top favorite comedy shows? Was it funny? Is that do you like it for funny? No, no it's like, a game show. <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't get the appeal with that. But your your recommendations are subject now oh beyond God. after you that watched one. the game show version, right? Not the actual TV show Squid Games. Correct, because okay. I've not seen the actual TV show Squid Games, but okay. I don't think I would like the challenge anymore having watched it. They just do yeah. the challenges. It's just, it's just a game show. I just love the strategy of it. The strategy is so good. <sighs> the strategy is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> They're all competing against each other. There is no strat. I mean, there is a strategy, but yeah. it's, they all just pretend to like each other. And then well, not that aspect of it. And the games. <sighs> the games are, I mean, look but at the co- people are big dum dums because somebody doesn't pass up on glass bridge and then james dies for no reason did and you then, watch it yes and nobody <laughs> talked about it afterwards so the person who didn't pass up never got any criticism but yes, then the next then woman to, to bring it up google it she was the one who got all the heat and then yeah. she ended up uh, you have to google it, it and learn that it was edited in such a way to imply that james was being a hero and took an extra jump when someone wouldn't pass him up but it wasn't the case because only may hated her for that and no, everyone else was on her side because it was actually from what I've read about behind the scenes, he jumped the gun and there was not someone doing him a wrong. They just edited it such that y- the audience thought that they were for drama because they had to insert some sort of drama or anything interesting in yeah. the show because there was none. That's interesting. Well, it, 
I got it. So yeah, they worked on me. They hooked me. That sh- that I show was ticked sucks. about well, it. Let's keep talking about good shows. You like Frasier? I love nice. Frasier. It's haven't it's seen so it. Good. Ham radio. I, I'll be honest. There's no chance I watch this show. <laughs> maybe watch a one it, episode. Maybe if it was one season. Oh yeah, it's a lot. I also feel like I would have to watch Tears first. Weirdly, you don't. It's crazy. You can go into it, and uh, you don't have to know really Frazier's background because he's kind of a barfly uh, in in Cheers, and he's the opposite of that. Uh, kind of getting away from Boston. Okay. All right. Um, I have nothing to say about Frazier. I have also not seen it. So Ham Radio, the one episode. I I swear. I'll take your word for it. Give it a um, watch. Luke, number four. Number four, Parks and Recreation. Uh, I I made this list very easily because I don't watch that much movie and movies or TV shows outside of star Wars. And when I do, I like to just rewatch the same sitcoms I've seen. Like I know that that's a trope of the millennial or Gen Z to just rewatch it for comfort. And yeah. I have definitely all these shows on my list. I've rewatched at least once if they're newer, more like five, six, seven, eight or nine times if they're older and parks and rec is no exception. It's in my rotation of all the shows I go through. When I finish one, I go to the next. It's great. It's not that consistent because seasons one and two are kind of a dud, but three through seven are exceptional. Some of the best TV I've ever seen. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Was it on your guys' list? Did I bump you down? Yes. I mean, I'm shocked that the rest of my list is where it is because it seems... It wasn't in my top five, actually, but it was right below them in my honorable mentions. I was actually expecting that to be one of my top five, but it didn't. It's 29 for me, and it's... That's 29. Low. Yes, because Parks and Rec to me, I loved it at the time. I thought Max <clears throat> was crazy for liking it better than The Office at the time. Um, and to me, rewatching it just does not hold up nearly as good. It's, to me, for me, a lot of nostalgia. One through two, like you said, aren't great. I actually really dislike six and seven. Which oh, means really? three, four, and five are the only ones I'm left with. And why I rewatched it not that long ago. And I then rewatched Thirty Rock and I was like, wow, Thirty Rock holds up like that still to me, which is also not on my list. Sorry if anybody else has it. Um but Parks and Rec it's just been it's been dropping, dropping, and dropping a little bit uh, as I as I rewatch. It's a great show. Harris Whittles is hilarious. Um, I, I love having the, uh, all the, again. That's a great cast as well. Uh, just having like introducing Chris Pratt and Aubrey Plaza, like to you know mm-hmm. uh, the 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 nation, <laughs> and but also having people like Rob Lowe to come in for you know and Amy Poehler and stuff after her, her SNL stint, and like really Adam Scott's like big break too. So I mean the cast is great, and I think what the show rides on is obviously its humor, but also the character dynamics are are so so good. Mm-hmm. One of the things I like about um, Parks and Rec is the seemingly lack of a straight man. Like every TV show has that straight man character mm-hmm. who just like plays it straight right yeah. like they're the ones who just kind of like make fun of all the crazy zany yeah. other people on the show that's a great call um but parks and rec doesn't have it because um amy poehler what's leslie? her name leslie nope. leslie nope um she's crazy ron swanson is like one of my favorite characters in yeah. all of tv ever um and he's not even that straight of a character he's got his own weirdness to him no exactly yeah. i don't think there is i i think the the person who's probably the most of a straight man on that show is um Adam Scott. Uh, ben Ben Wyatt, yeah. Adam Scott, yeah, and even then he's got this weird backstory where he's like the ice, you know, he's, exactly. He's, the more you get to know him, the yeah. less of a straight man he becomes because he's like more of a straight man in like the first couple seasons. Yeah. Um, Cones after, of Dunshire, <laughs> Cones of yeah. Um, after um, Anne's first love interest leaves the show, what was his name? In season one. Oh God, what was his name? The Mark architect, Mark Brandanowitz. Mark, yes, Brandanowitz. Mark Brandanowitz. He was probably the straight man, yeah. but I feel like yeah, he didn't he test well with audiences, probably because of that. So then they kicked yeah. him off, and then they brought on Ben Wyatt, and then yeah, as the show went on, he got even zanier. Definitely, too. I like that growing pains in that show, but I, all worth it. Because I remember in college, I was working a job uh, where I was uh, driving for like a taxi service for my university, hmm. and when I didn't have a ride, I was watching Parks and Rec, and then I got a ride, and this guy was like, "Oh, what are you watching?" And I said, "Parks and Rec." And he was just such a red flag frat bro. He was <laughs> probably drunk for one, but he was like, oh, I love that show. Ron Swanson is like my spirit animal. He and I are like the exact same. And I said, oh, yeah, like uh, emotional negligence and stuff. And you can't really connect with anyone on a deeper level than small talk. And he was like, no, not that. More like the meat and the honor and stuff. And I was like, okay, meat dude, you're at your stop. Get out. That's hilarious. Like you were like really waiting for a beat and I'd be like, oh my God. <laughs> that's so stupid. But that's funny though, because I've had a similar experience too where 
like I've heard people be like, oh, people say I'm just like Ron Swanson. And I'm just like, no, they fucking don't. <laughs> you know. are not like Ron Swanson. <laughs> Everyone wants to be Ron Swanson. You're not. Yeah. Um, also, you said you don't like season six or seven. I, lo- I love season six. I don't see what the fault mm-hmm. is there. But season seven, they took such a risk with the three year time jump. Yeah. And then making a lot of jokes based on like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if three years in the future this happened? Mm-hmm. And now like the time jump at the time was 2014 to 17, I think. And now we're eight, like seven years past that. And some of the jokes are just so dumb now. Yeah. Like the, I remember there was one joke about like the Cubs winning the World Series because mm-hmm. they were in a hundred year drought, and now like they actually did in like 2016 or 17. Yes. And so yeah. that doesn't land. And the other one where Andy says like, "Oh, we could go see the new Jason Bourne movie. It's supposed to be really funny." But it's like now, I mean, we did get another Jason Bourne yeah. movie for one, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did it again and made it a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. The last season is starring Chris Pratt. <laughs> is it really? No, I would just. Oh. That, that it just was, feels like the only they would do. Chris Pratt. Yeah. Um. The, the last season is definitely a dip for me, but it's not. It's not like so bad that it like ruins the show or anything. I like it. One of, I, I like it. But they were clearly ending the show at six, and then they got the green light for seven, and had to be like, "Oh crap! How do we do this now?" Yeah. No, because they ended six on the cliffhanger. What do I? Did they? Well, how did six end? Well, it wasn't really a cliffhanger. It was the three-year time jump. Yeah. And so I guess, yeah, that, that Cause tracks with what you were saying. They probably did get the green light for season seven, then it had to go with the three-year time jump. And season six is when Andy leaves, right? And he's in London. I love that. See, yeah, I, that's so funny, though. That's I love the that. stuff I, do like that. I don't love, because it's clearly just like him going for, to film Guardians. Yes, and then he gets in shape, and then they ask him how he lost all that weight. And he's like, oh, I just stopped drinking beer. And they're like, how much beer were you drinking? I that, know, right? Probably I was going to say, that's the only, that's the funniest joke to me then that season was like, I, I still think of that all the time. So when I stopped drinking beer, I had expected the same thing to happen. <laughs> Uh, no, the funniest joke happened. is when he's depressed and Ben asks him if he's okay. And he says, yeah, I'm fine. Although I haven't been sleeping. I'm overeating. I'm gaining weight. None of my old interests, ho- no, <laughs> none of my old hobbies interest me anymore. Just, yeah, but I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's life. Oh, man. That's a good choice, though. Again, it's, uh, it's in my top 100 TV shows. And it's uh, 29 Andy. in the comedy realm. Ron Swanson and Andy Dwyer are probably two of the best characters ever in tv in my opinion and whenever they team up too it's even better they mm-hmm. have a lot of good content together i have a lot of other stuff i have to say but it is really hard to not bring up other shows that we're about to yeah. so i'll just move on to my number four um which is also going to be really hard to talk about without talking about something else we will address but my number four uh is it's always sunny in philadelphia i love it the show has been going on for what feels like 30 years now um (laughs) but it is always good i feel like there's never been a dip in uh quality or humor or anything like that because it's obviously written and created by the same people who i also personally really like and Mm -hmm. enjoy following um so that they have a great podcast they do they have a really good podcast podcast. plug they should plug us on their podcast next (laughs) (laughs) i'm sure they will I don't um, know the name of it. I guess if we're doing it, never mind. <laughs> is it just the Always Sunny podcast? It is a name. I think be. it is. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean everything uh, with Rob McElhaney um, and Caitlin Olson, D being married in real life, and Rob being the co-owner of uh, Wrexham FC, uh, the football team with Ryan Reynolds and everything like that. Charlie Day and his whole career. Um, Glenn Howerton, I guess, is the the one who I'm kind of like the least. AP Bio, in. but Blackberry. he does act in a lot of stuff. Yeah, AP yeah. Bio, um, which got canceled. <laughs> but again, I have a lot of other stuff that I want to talk about. But unfortunately, it's going to have to wait. Yeah. Don't dig on AP Bio. It made it like a couple of seasons. Yeah, it was four. It was, it was successful. Yeah, I'm just saying it got canceled. That's all. I mean, everything gets sort of the event. Mick. Lots of stuff gets canceled eventually. Four seasons is a, is a successful project. What yeah. about that other show that Rob McElhaney was doing, where he's like a developer for a, a game, video game? Oh, oh Mythic, Mythic Quest. TV. Mythic yeah, Quest. That's, that's actually a great show. Yeah. Is it? Out of all those spinoff ones they've done, like AP Bio or, or uh, uh, the Mick, uh, Mythic Quest is in my top 100 TV shows as well. It's 99, but it's there. Hmm. Rob McElhaney was the Dharma Initiative henchman in that episode of Lost, he right? He was. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> who I'm thinking of. That's uh, that's them, yeah. I'm lost. Um, Always Sunny is one of my favorite shows as well. This is, uh, you know, to be transparent, my number seven. Um, but I, the one thing I will disagree with is, is the quality drop. I it's the the Ireland season. I wasn't a fan of. No, I'm gonna defend it. I love the Ireland season yeah. because the show is such stupid humor. It wasn't a whole season. It was just a few episodes. Four. There was it a was couple episodes, episodes like leading up to yeah. it. Um, but the well, and each season is only eight episodes. So 
now something yeah. like that they it does feel like it's the entire season um but the show is so stupid and like all their jokes are stupid and sometimes i just like dumb humor um but uh like uh max full name being ronald mcdonald yep. revealing that after like 10 seasons or something yep. was absolutely hilarious uh charlie kelly actually not being illiterate but he's just like fluent in celtic <laughs> and just never knew it his whole life <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. because he can like read it and understand it and he just didn't know um i think that's hilarious it's it's actually really good background because it like kind of fills in that gap that we just didn't need yep. and it is so heartfelt when his dad dies in ireland and he yeah. has to carry him up that mountain and he's like yelling at him and everything i remember watching that and thinking like oh my gosh i'm actually getting like feelings while watching it's all beat sunny in philadelphia yeah. like the last show i was expecting to get feelings to and it's done that a couple times the last season or uh, the last episode of i forget what season it is but it's the season where mac essentially comes out oh, i think yeah. they're in prison and he's like doing this interpretive dance, dance or whatever yeah. and in theory that sounds so stupid but like you're watching it it's like oh my gosh you know yeah it is great i did work on the ireland season that might be why because i watched those episodes for the first time uncolored unfinished and so that wasn't the best they also double Ireland for Culver City, which you've also been in, been to, mm. uh, and where the McDonald's is at when they go to. It's just like a, it's a shop that I used to walk by all the time. So it just, those things took me out of it. But besides that, I mean, it's always saying Philadelphia is one of the best shows just of all time. It's been going on, you know, we're going on the 17th season now. It's going to be like the 19th year. And it's, I remember when me and my younger brother, Mike, were kids, it came out in 2005 originally, we like stayed up and snuck to watch it. Um, this is, you know, we're way too young to watch this show. I mean, they, it is super aggressive, especially in the first couple seasons, mm -hmm. but it is so good. It is boundary breaking. It is, you know, they always said it's like Seinfeld on crack and it really is. They never find a way to stop being offensive. Yeah. And like you can find the humor offensive, but you have to yeah. respect it a little bit that oh, they keep yeah. finding new ways to be offensive after 17 seasons and like all of these episodes, they're still, yep. yeah, well, it's, I, I it's like impressive. it's always sunny in Philadelphia. It didn't make my list because. I don't think the quality dives or dips like by season, but by episode. And I think it's because it's those same three writers having complete creative control to do whatever they want. They swing for the fences almost every single episode. And there are sometimes entire episodes where I'm like, this is the dumbest show I've ever seen in my life. And I don't laugh a single time. And then the very next episode is absolutely hilarious. And so the quality is just so sporadic in my, for me at least, from episode to episode that some are great and some are awful. Um, but, I mean, when it hits, it hits hard. It's really funny when I like it. I think that's very fair, though, because you're absolutely right. They do have a lot of control, and they do some weird episodes every now and then. Yeah. But sometimes those are my favorite, too. I would like to know if you had, like, a list to go over them, because I bet, like, what you would think are, like, some of the worst episodes. Other people would be like, are you kidding? That's the best ones. Yeah. But that's what happens when you have a show like that. I know. And people always talk about the, like, the downside of having, like, a business showrunner behind the show to steer quality. And, like, sometimes it almost always affects quality for the worse in some ways but it always makes it consistent and i think that they don't have that in this show interesting i i, I will say that quality wise not necessarily script wise but visually i want them to go back to four by three and it to look worse it looks too clean and crisp and i don't like the full screen anymore it doesn't fit the the theme or the tone of the show no, or their personalities I, I like that it with the four by three grittiness i love that look so much better um I, I prefer that but i like yeah sunny's great it's I, fantastic i respect that opinion but i would hate it if it suddenly went back to four three and was grainy all of a sudden <laughs> um all right matt number three number three number three is also one of my favorite shows of all time that's not a surprise all of these shows uh, are in my top five now uh but number three is the simpsons um i love the simpsons so much it i got into it when i was like nine or ten years old um it's such a fun world, and it's also a show that I think people have a perception of what The Simpsons is just because of culture in a weird weird way. Just like people have a perception of what Star Wars is without ever seeing it necessarily. It's like, you know who Homer Simpson is, you know who Bart Simpson is. And I got my uh, wife into The Simpsons, and um, that, for her example, you know, when she was watching it, and she's like, wow, I was actually surprised how much heart The Simpsons actually has. Like, I don't know if you've, I, maybe you've seen the memes or not, but there's a whole episode where Homer really decides to, like, leave his job. Uh, and it's like, it's, it's a funny episode, but at the very end of it, he decides not to, and he covers up all, um, all the, all of this, his pictures, uh, that says do it for her. And it's his youngest daughter. And he's like, he has a terrible job, but he does it for his daughter. And it's like, it's got a lot of heart and it's got, it is so funny. And the world is so expansive. And it's one of those shows that when you start watching the first season, it's not great. Second is okay. Third is really when it hits its stride. 
And, you know, we're going on season 34 now, and it's Jeez. crazy. There's almost 700 episodes now, which is crazy. Um, but it is so good. And I, it's one of those shows where I thought the quality dropped and then I threw on season 30 and I was like, no, this is still funny. It's not, I prefer still the, the first 18 seasons, which is a crazy sentence to say. I know. How many episodes are in a season? 24. Oh my God. It's crazy. But that's, I mean, that's too much content to even think about. It is crazy. That's... But honestly, it's the perfect show because I can put on so many. If I'm just like, oh, I want a Mr. Burns episode, I have 20, 30 Mr. Burns episodes. I have, if I want a Flanders centered episode, you know, you can do a Flanders centered episode. And that's the thing. As the show goes on, you get deeper into the side characters. And all of a sudden, the side characters are the main characters for a little bit in a way. And so it's a lot of fun, too, to explore that, you know, going through the town and stuff. And there's a reason that, you know, Universal Studios has the Simpsons section as well. I do have a lot of bias, I guess, with adult animation. Mm -hmm. um, because it's just hard for me to kind of, like, differentiate it all. Because I feel like they do get lumped together. Like, you said Bob's Burgers and Simpsons. I yeah. also... You're going to get mad at me for saying this, like lump those together with Family Guy, just like in my head. Like they're, they're on, all kind of like the same thing, right? Yeah, I would say. They're uh, all like that's, that's Fox Animation. Yep. And so you kind of like assume that they're the same and like uh, uh, Family Dad or American Dad. <laughs> family Dad. <laughs> American Dad. <laughs> um, again, that's like another one like Family Guy, right? And yeah, yeah it's just hard for me to to go into those type of shows open-minded because I'm just like, oh, it's going to be stupid. I don't like it. But I have watched a couple episodes yeah. because you forced me to and... <laughs> I say that in a good way. <laughs> I like them. Yeah, I, I really love enjoy them. They're to do hilarious. <laughs> um, but it's also a fun show to go back and, and look at the writers room for it because they've yeah. had like an all star cast of writers like yeah. go through there before. Like I I don't know who all it was. Bob Odenkirk, Conan O'Brien. I was gonna say Conan O'Brien yeah. was on there like before he was famous, obviously, and a bunch of other people. Yeah, Matt Selman is the P silent. Is it Simpsons or yeah. Simpsons? Simpsons. It's Simpsons, but you know. Simpsons. Do they say the P in the show? Yeah. Okay. I feel like Simpsons. I hear it. I don't know. It's true. I, I never, I never, I never knew because I only hear it talked about. I never really, I've never watched it and I never really followed it, but it's great. Cool no, I, I, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. Also, if, uh, there's a theme of Kelsey Grammer because he's played Sideshow Bob. Um, but yeah, I love, especially in the 90s, there's these the Burger King collaborations they used to have with like the Halloween drinks because they have a, um, squishies in the show which are slurpees and so they had like a collaboration with burger king and they had these watches like it just is so nostalgic for me as well and i watch it every single night and i uh as my wife will tell anybody that i fall asleep to it every single night and she'll wake me up be like you gotta turn the tv off <laughs> um, but i look forward to it every night i'm looking forward to doing after this <laughs> uh luke you're number three number three scrubs uh we talk about quality uh consistency and scrubs maintains consistency because it spins off into a different show at the end, which is worse. Scrubs interns, not as good, but I'm only talking about seasons one through eight. I don't know exactly how it works with like, I mean, sometimes when I, well, when was the last time I watched Scrubs? I think it might've been on Netflix, uh, but, or no, it was on Hulu, but it does show like Scrubs interns right after season eight finale, but season eight is definitely a finale. Like if you watch it, that is 100% the finale to the show and it's an amazing finale. And so I'm realizing every show on my list has a great finale which i mean it doesn't it's not necessary to make a great tv show because like especially a comedy show it's not like mm -hmm. this story needs a satisfying resolution to be that funny throughout years and years of uh shows but maybe when i'm remembering them or just when i go to rewatch them rewatchability is better if it has a good ending because like no, how yeah. I your mother has a terrible ending and i never mm -hmm. rewatched that even though i remember liking it quite a bit when it was coming out yeah. uh but Scrubs, it's hilarious uh, all the way through, and yeah, I love it. There's that one musical episode. <laughs> That's true, there is. I, I just quoted that musical episode the other day when I was hanging out with our brother, Jake. What'd you say? Uh, it was the uh, um, the song, um, we go, da, da, da. Um, oh my gosh, give me a second. We go There's together. Based on like... a real song, too. Yeah. Yeah, there's that great, one. Hey and they're saying long medical words. <laughs> exactly. So it's funny. But. but I'm trying to think of what the actual song is that they like spoof that off of, and I can't think of it. I think it's from Greece. I don't know. And um, now we have great AT and T commercials. Nope, it's T-Mobile. <laughs> Zach Raffin. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. Don't tell me Donald Faison, mm -hmm. who's a, a Star Wars alum. Uh, Donald Faison is in Resistance. Just Faison. Faison. Mm -hmm. Oh. He has a sneaky eye in there. Because Hype Faison is named after him, his Star Wars character. I have never made that That's, connection. I no, didn't either. Mm -hmm. wow. That's crazy, actually. Um, 
yeah, I absolutely love this pick. Uh, Scrubs is a uh, big uh, part. Is it's a big point of contention in my marriage. Actually, I'm going to give you guys a little peek behind the curtains. She doesn't like Scrubs. Um, she she refuses to try it, but she loves Grey's Anatomy, and I'm just like, it's Grey's Anatomy, but it's a comedy. Like, just interesting. You you like you like comedy. You like funny shows. And yeah. You like medical <laughs> shows. This is right up your alley. That and her, is, my sister-in-law is, is a nurse, too, and she also likes funny TV shows. I'm trying to get her into it, but <laughs> it's so uh, it's so frustrating because it's such a good show. It is a good... Yeah, I like I like Scrubs a lot. It's not in my top 100. I, I, I never fully got into it. Medical stuff freaks me out, and I don't love that, so that's, you know, no fault against its own. <laughs> it's very funny. Um, I, I agree that intern stuff with Dave Franco is not very good, um, but you can't, you can't fault it for that. It's, it it's a like different it's a show, show, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Season eight does have a couple of episodes like the, the actors weren't all in every episode yep. all of a sudden, but the Bahamas episodes were two of the best in the whole series. And then the finale was one of the best mm-hmm. in the whole series. So it's still a high, and high quality show. The, the ukulele. Hey, ya version mm-hmm. is great during the wedding. It's a guitar. And then, um, is it? Mm-hmm. It's and then, um, because I remember I tried to learn how to play oh, it nice. when I was playing guitar. Um, the Brendan Fraser episodes though are stellar as well. When, I was yeah, gonna talk it's, about those. That's, I mean, that's one of the reasons I'm just like I can't, I can't watch the show. I think it's, too it's sad. just one episode because they're heartbreaking, Frazier. and that's why Scrubs Scrubs deserves so much credit for being able to. Yeah. It's not like going back and forth in a way that's jarring. Like it's actually like just perfect how it's so funny one second and then the next second it can actually make you cry, but yeah. it still also blends this like humor of being really smart but also really dumb because like JD is just like a dumb guy. Yeah. Um, it, street's dumb. He's still a doctor. It puts you in the world of a hospital. It, you know, you have yeah. to laugh in the sad moments and, and cry in the happy one. Yeah, there's there's so many good parts like that. So I'm glad that someone had that in their top five. It was not in mine, but I was thankful to see it in there. It's good Again, pick. I'm shocked that this isn't in your guys' top five. I, Matt's going with a lot of animation that I've never seen, but I'm excited to hear what Max's other picks are. Well, my numbers... We, we're, I mean, we're brothers and we were raised in the same household. We have very similar opinions on a lot of stuff. But I can't believe our lists did not have more I was, beef than I they did. I was very surprised. Um, but my number three seems like a slam dunk. It's Arrested Development. Yep. It is criminally underrated. A lot of people would argue that it's rated, but I would say it's before its time. Yeah. Um, it is, I think, the smartest show ever written. Seasons one through three, specifically, yes. are three seasons of the best television ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it got canceled, unfortunately, and then it came back on Netflix for season four and they swung for the fences. They wanted to do something a little bit different. And so they like did this whole season where they like covered this huge gap of time where they were off air and they went back and they filled it in. And like they did like individual episodes following one specific character for an extended period of time. And the, these character stories would consistently overlap and interweave into the other character stories that then for their episodes, you would see more of and you'd be like, oh, I've seen this part before mm-hmm. in that other episode. And then it would keep going. And it hurts my brain when I watch it to, to put all these pieces together, because every time I watch it, you find something new. And it's yep. so smart, but it is hard to watch. Season four is hard to watch. And then it came back again for season five and they kind of did it like a normal uh, season. Um, and it was great, uh, but mm-hmm. it was probably not as good as seasons one through three, in my opinion. That's why I have this as my number three. I think there is, I wouldn't call it a big dip in quality, but it changes a lot. The, yeah. Going from season three to four is jarring. So much so that I don't even think it is on Netflix anymore, is it? It is, but the remix, it's the remix version where it's not as crazy. All the episodes yeah. are combined they had to re-edit the entire season chronologically because people couldn't follow it basically and that's again ahead of its time even in season four even though it's not as fun to watch it is ahead of its time even then this is my number 13 and Um, i feel like this was also one of the first things that matt and i ever bonded over that's true uh, in college i we were on break because you came over to my parents house Mm -hmm. and we got frozen bananas and watched uh the premiere of arrest development season four that's true i mean even before i mean that was the first show we watched together that we'd never seen before because we watched how much your mother we watched wilfred we watched those kind of shows but the rest of development i think we got it in at the same time right i forgot about wilfred that's a throwback. yeah that's a great show yeah um debatably a comedy sometimes <laughs> <Just> so <laughs> serious uh, another moment but yeah rest of development's so good i love job is my favorite character um i think he's so funny i mean obviously buster i mean you have you know a lucille uh you know he got his arm bit off by a lucille trying to escape from lucille like it's you know blah 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 blog 
like there's so many things it's it arrested development is obviously so stellar it's so so you have to go back and rewatch it too because they lay the premise for jokes like episodes beforehand it's not it's hard to like pick up just a random episode and be like oh i want to watch this episode because like it it, they do have kind of like story arcs and you have to watch it through to appreciate a lot of the humor when they when he when uh, i forget where he, he trips out in the entrance or when he opens the cabinet, there's like one glass in there every time. Like things like that are so funny. Yeah, um, yeah. There's so good. I haven't seen it. I've seen most of the first season a while, a long, long time ago. Um, but I've never come back to it. I would like to at some point because I do think I would like it. But my only point to add, which maybe I shouldn't even, but um, I was watching TikToks because I'm I'm not actually gonna watch a whole documentary about the Quiet on Set documentary about all the sexual assault that happened in Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. And someone said that one of the people doing the sexual assault or something, I forget who it was exactly, but she said he had kind of an arrested development. And I was like, oh, it's actually like a phrase. (laughs) But I feel like you shouldn't even use that. This show's too big. I don't even watch the show. And I feel like you can't use that phrase. Don't slander the show with this. (laughs) Completely unrelated. (laughs) But it is a phrase. I I mean, do you have you ever heard someone use the phrase? I don't think outside of Arrested Development. I think there's like a, you can't a use music. The That's too big of a Wasn't movie. Wasn't there a musical a artist a whose name, their name was Arrested Development, and then no they idea. got sued and they had to change it, and they changed it to like Arrest Development or something like that? I have that. no idea. I'm going to sound crazy if I just made all that up, but I'm pretty sure there's something about that. Um, But yeah, this uh, Arrested Development is also a, a show uh, with an obvious straight man, George yep. Bluth. Or, mm-hmm. Michael. Uh, Michael, Michael Blue um, is the obvious straight man. His whole family is just completely crazy, and he's the glue. He's holding it all together. Um, and as a result, he's like everyone's least favorite character. Like you don't like the straight man. Like but you he, gotta, you like you yeah. like Job. You like yeah. uh, Tobias. You like um, but Buster. But... In the same vein, Michael holding it all together is indeed a crazy person as well. To be well, able they to kind of like make it. him a crazy person, yeah. which is interesting. Like as the show goes on, he does yeah. get more and more crazy. And it yeah, it's I like Michael a lot though. All right, number two is Matt. My number two is Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, Larry David is so funny. Is, what's the format of this show? Is it a skit show? No, no, no. It's it's just a. Oh, you've never seen Curb Your Enthusiasm? Mm-mm. I don't like it's, Seinfeld, so I don't think I would like Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's crazy. I think Sein Curb Your Enthusiasm is is a better Seinfeld. I love Seinfeld, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, and it's, you know, uh, full disclosure by number six. Um, but Kirby enthusiasm, I think is, it works so well because it's just Larry David playing him, you know, a, a different version of himself. He, in the show wrote Seinfeld mm-hmm. and, and I think it is, you know, a more adult version of Seinfeld, um, where Larry's able to really go out on a limb. He brings all his friends along with like Bob Einstein, uh, who recently passed away, Richard Lewis, who recently, recently passed away, um, along with uh, Jeff Garland, who plays Jeff Green, his manager. So does it, like, tell stories? Is there any heart to it? No, I wouldn't say much heart to it. But, like, so for the first example, the first episode ever, it's about uh, the pants tent. And so, you know, when you sit down and you're, like, there's extra, like, buyer, mm-hmm. it's just, like... Fabric in the cracks extra, makes it look yes, like you thank have an you. I don't know why I couldn't say anything. Yes. So the whole thing is that he goes to the movie theater the movies with uh, his wife's friend and she thinks that he gets an erection, but it's actually just like a weird pants tent because of his pants like that. And so that causes a full slew of things for, for Larry to deal with. And so that's every kind of episode is like this, you know, it's just his, but there's no like plot through line throughout the, there is is. every season has its own seasonal through line as well. Even if it's very thin. Yeah, sometimes wish- it's thinner than others, but sometimes yeah. it's uh, absolutely incredible. Like the uh, the Seinfeld reunion is probably the best season yes. of Curb Your Enthusiasm, where the entire season he's reaching out to all the actors from Seinfeld. So you see cameo appearances from all of them, and he talks to them about doing the reunion, and he convinces them to do it. And you see him like write the show, and then they rehearse the show, and then you actually like the season finale is you're like basically watching an episode of Seinfeld. Yeah. But it's like a modern day reunion episode and it's like really good. It's so smart because uh, uh, I think Larry David has said like he would never do an actual Seinfeld reunion or maybe it was Jerry actually who said he would never do an actual Seinfeld reunion. But like this was like the perfect way to like kind of do one without actually doing it. And to add a layer on top of that, the whole reason he's doing the reunion is to cast his wife in the part who he recently got divorced and realized he made a mistake. So he divorced his wife and then was like, oh, I fucked up. And then. Is like, how do I get her back? In the show or in real life? In the show. Okay. And then so he was like, oh, I'm just going to read, I'm just going to boot up Seinfeld and cast her as one of the main parts. 
And so the whole reason he does that is just to get her back uh, as well. So it's like layers on top of layers. It's so funny. It's so is it his quick. his wife in real life? No. Her yeah. name is Cheryl Hines. She's actually married to RFK. But it's just, it's he plays same. he plays himself a, though. A version of himself. I mean, he's obviously very stingy and like gr- grumpy and stuff. But isn't too. that how he is in real life? Yeah, but not to that extent. I don't oh, think. You've seen Seinfeld, right? Yeah. That's it's, it's that. that. Yeah. It's the exact same he thing. He is George. It's just it's a George spin-off, but it's like a little more crass. Yes. I just was so confused that it's the same character as the as it's Larry David. It's, yeah. The character is the same as the actor, which I guess Seinfeld did that too. Maybe that's why I don't like Seinfeld. I just can't get my head around it. <laughs> Pick a new name if you're going to make a show. <laughs> too complicated. Yep. Too it's so layers. good. And I'm pretty sure I texted you this, Max, is that this new season, it's the it's the it's finally ending. It's been on since oh, yeah? 2000. Um, Jeez. And but there's of, not that many seasons, though, because Larry yeah. David just kind of does it whenever he wants. Yes. When did Seinfeld end? In, in 90s. Uh, 98. Early. Oh, 98? I was yeah. going to say early 90s. Um, yeah, it started in 89. 89 to 98. Yeah, it was nine seasons, yeah. Um, And then um, Curb started in 2000, and it's been 12 seasons now, and I'm pretty sure what this season is leading up to is Larry going to jail, just like they did at the end of Seinfeld. I'm 90% sure, because everyone hates that ending for some reason, and he jokes about everyone that hates that ending, and I'm 90% sure that he's going to go to jail at the end, just like they do in Kirby. Or just, just to the give everyone a giant middle finger to say, I will never change. Yes. Yeah. Because that's who Larry David first, is. Exactly. He will never change. I'm 90% <laughs> sure if, it, if that happens, I will die laughing. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Well, I'll have they talk. To- I, I have more comments, but it's going to yes. have to wait until we talk about another show. They just talk a lot about, like, I don't know, they go to, they go to the temple a lot. They go to Jewish delis. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Luke, you're number two. Uh, friends. It's a tried and true. I've seen it just so many times. I watched it all the time. Growing up, we had all the DVDs. We would just cycle through one after the other. We'd have some in our car and listen to, and watch that one more than more than others. Like a random six episodes of season six. I remember I can quote far better than I have any right to. Um, <laughs> but it's just it's just the perfect sitcom. You know, it's hilarious. There's no quality dips. Um, I don't really, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It's There's just such an obvious pick. I can't believe it's no one else's. There is, it's definitely, it was in my top 10. Um, Because, yeah, like you said, we grew up watching it, basically. And I feel like Friends is just like my baseline for good television. Like, if, like, that's kind of like, if it's not as good as Friends, it's bad. And if it's better, then it's good. Um, But Friends, it doesn't have a dip in quality. The quality is very consistent, but there are occasional, like, story arcs that are weird. Like the biggest one that everyone always talks about is the Joey and Rachel story arc. That's mm-hmm. what I was weird. Say, I don't mind it though. I don't. I don't hate I don't it. Hate it. Yeah. But like, it is. It is weird. It's yes. definitely weird. Like, it's a weird side tangent that it feels like the show goes on. It's like everyone doesn't need to date each other. It's like that's mm-hmm. you should, they. How Mitch Miller should have learned from that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I. No notes. I think it's great. The reunion, uh, that they did with all the cast members, um, before Matthew Perry's demise unfortunately um was beautiful i think i've rewatched that reunion like three times really i didn't i didn't love the reunion that much no oh, i was so good i would have rather them had written something even just no, a, a I, short episode i don't know i just I, seeing I, these six people get back together with their former co-workers like i was i don't relate to the actors as much as other people seem to like i'm not clamoring for other reunions of other shows just to see all these characters, all these actors get back together. I don't care about the actors. I mean, recast it for all I care. I disagree. I feel like that's all yeah. I care about. I am so burned out on these reboots of TV shows that are coming back and like they all just suck now. And uh, I would not want Friends to come back, but I feel like the reunion was perfect. I feel like Friends reunion was perfect. I feel like the Seinfeld reunion via Curb was mm-hmm. perfect. Um yeah, because if it comes back, it can, I don't know, I feel like it could almost ruin it. And in the reunion, uh, Lisa Kudrow even says, like, you can't have Phoebe come back as, an, like, a mature adult. Like, she's no. like a floozy, and, like, you don't want her to be a floozy as an adult either, because then it's just kind of sad. Like, what do you do with that character? And it's a good point. Like, mm-hmm. you just, you got to let her lay, and that's yeah. how the entire show needs to be treated. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I've said that about Star Wars, too, that, like, if they came back and made a terrible Star Wars movie, I wouldn't like any of the other Star Wars any less. And... The more I talk about it with more people and what I see online, I realize I'm in the minority in that opinion. So I'll take for I'll take it for what yeah. it is. It's not but. a comedy, so I can talk about it. But I mean, I always think about Game of Thrones, just how yeah. massive of a cultural phenomenon that was, and then how immediately it left the 
cultural zeitgeist. ether, the zeitgeist, um, <laughs> after its terrible ending. And people were just like, oh, okay, that show kind of sucks, actually. And it's like, well, you absolutely loved it for like the seven seasons leading yeah. up to it. You just didn't like the ending, but that's all it takes. Yeah, that's a really good example, and it really takes the wind out of what I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't take away anything you're saying, but I think I think you're correct in that you probably are the minority and that like it wouldn't yeah. ruin anything that mm-hmm. you've had before. Because that was all building to something. Like Friends isn't building to a reunion, and so a reunion correct. wouldn't ruin Friends. Yeah, you can you can go back in and just plug in a random episode of Friends, and you don't have to watch anything before or after. Yes, and same with Star Wars. Star Wars was not building to the Book of Boba Fett, and so... The, <laughs> or Boba Fett's character was not building to the Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. And so it didn't change anything from old Boba Fett. Yeah, that's true. Oof, uh, I was worried you were about to change everything I think about <laughs> with that example. <laughs> Never, mind. Never mind. No, you're good. You're good. I am right. It's the kids that are wrong. <laughs> I think uh, Friends is also... Uh, I was going to joke and say I fucking hate Friends, but I also want to do want to with this long but i think friends also is evil one of the only you shows not like friends no i was gonna say fucking hate friends and lie and okay, just to okay. see it get, get rise you know i do love friends um but i was just gonna say i i think friends is able to tap into something a little deeper even uh, i know sometimes i go there with in the fact of like oh yeah it goes but it does go into this deeper uh amount of just to, to see have it, that group of friends and so when they leave manhattan it is depressing at the end you know the very last shot it's you want them to go and hang out in central perk and that's because not only do you want them to hang out but you want to consistently hang out with your friends as well and so you don't want to be put in that situation um so i think it is able to tow a little bit of a different line i love curb enthusiasm but it never makes me think a little deeper <laughs> you know about mm-hmm. anything um but anyway yes max number two my number two is community i think community is one of the one of the smartest shows i think it's one of the funniest shows and it is a show that it does also, like Arrest Development, change drastically because it has an all-star cast of characters who unfortunately change a lot. Because Donald Glover, yeah. uh, um, Chevy Chase, um, uh, Mike Herman the... Trump. <laughs> oh, yeah, he comes in... later. And no, I was gonna say John um, Oliver. Uh, no, the, Oliver. the black woman. What's her name? Yvette Nicole Brown. Yvette yeah. Nicole Brown. She's a Clevelander. Admittedly, everyone's least favorite character on the show, but all three of them. They're like four. They're three of the seven main characters, and all three of them leave like kind of like halfway through the show. Yeah. And it does definitely change because Chevy Chase and uh, Donald Glover are two of the funniest characters on the show. Yeah. But they still find ways to be funny without them, and that's something again that we'll talk about with another show. But um, it is consistently funny. It changes a lot. There's a big change, but it's not necessarily a dip in quality, kind of like Arrested Development. But mm-hmm. it is, I think, funnier than Arrested Development. I think it's smarter. Um, I think the Whoa. writing is very, very tight, and I appreciate that a lot. That's crazy. I love. I really do love a community. Um, it's not my number thirty-two. I think is uh, or thirty-one. Whatever. It's the one after Parks and Rec. Um, I also really love community. It, it is one of those things where it does dip. Um, but it it's so fun to go back to. I mean, you have like. Um, actually, now that I think it's the exact same thing as Arrested Development because it's seasons one through three of Community, yeah, right? Yeah, one through three of Community are perfect, and then season four is also good, but that's the one where Chevy Chase and um, Troy, uh, Troy, uh, well, Donald Glover yeah. leave, <laughs> and then I think the next season is when Yvette Nicole Brown leaves, and when they leave, they kind of like replace them with other characters yeah, and stuff, which are work. also still great yeah. characters. I like them, but I like just, it's definitely yeah. you could tell like they're just trying to fill a void. Yeah, it definitely it's a it, groundbreaking show as well. I remember watching The Office and uh, Parks and Rec and the community being on right afterwards. We would watch them all together, um, which we'll talk about in a moment, I think, as well. But watching all those three back to back in college was, was was great, and that's how I feel about animation domination with the simpsons and family guy and bob's burgers as well i uh have seen community i have not seen it all the way through it was my pandemic show i watched it for the first time when the pandemic hit i remember playing tetris 99 and watching it all day for weeks and um i stopped watching right around when donald glover and chevy chase left and then i started rewatching it recently because like i said i just rewatched sitcoms um nat by default basically which is just what i put on to have in the background and stuff and I only got to like season two or three. I don't think I like Community that much. I was surprised that really? I didn't like it more. Because I know it's so beloved by you, at least, and so many other people. And like I do like episodes, but I don't I don't know what it is. I I like it, but it is not that high on my list. It was not on my top ten. Yeah, that's Thanks. disappointing. No, I I like it a lot. It's kind of it's another show too where Dan Harmon is the showrunner and he has a lot of control, so he's also able to do a lot of 
weird things with the show where he kind of swings for the fences. They have one episode that's all claymation. Uh, they have like a, a multiple uh, season Maybe finale. Maybe that's what it is, actually. It's the, yeah, it's like the Always Sunny in Philadelphia thing. Some episodes are absolutely hilarious, and some episodes I actually dislike. Yeah. And then, so, like, um, uh, what about the paintball episodes? You like those? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I thought oh, you'd be man. more. I the thought you'd be more passionate form? about it. One, because uh, one is uh, like Western themed, and then another one's like Star Wars themed. But it like it's such a good like commentary on them. It's not just I don't know. It's really good. The Halloween episodes are great. The Halloween episodes. Yeah. Season four is when Diane Harmon is not the showrunner, I believe. Right, that's when he got kicked out. Oh, I didn't know he got kicked out. Yeah, he got kicked out, and so that's... <laughs> I remember I could tell because it's the one when um, Troy and the girl get together. Annie. No, the other girl. Oh, Britta. Britta, yeah. yeah. And I was like, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> that seems out of left field. Classic Rachel Joey situation going on here, yeah. you know? Uh, Matt, number two. No, you did your number two. Yes. Let's do number one. Number ones. Number one, my favorite uh, comedy half hour of all time is The Office. Um, This is Same. something. Yeah. yeah. We, we were building to this one. Yeah, <laughs> this was all easy, of our number ones. Call. Yes. Did and you, you know, have to think about it or did you no. start making your list Office number one? It's, right my, off the rip? it's my second favorite show of all time next to Batman the Animated Series. Um, and you know, there was this weirdness, I think once it ended, like when it went on streaming that people like had this huge affinity for it and kind of became like, an annoying meme thing. Um, I kind of stayed out of that part of the internet, but like watching it, um, I started watching it in 2008. So it was in its fourth season at that point. Um, and it was a thing that I just used to buy the DVDs and my whole family would get around and watch it. And it was, a, it was such a blast. I mean, it's so funny. It's so heartfelt. It's so endearing. I still watch it, and I it's it's quotable. You can find new things in it. I don't even mind when Michael Scott leaves. They had some trouble finding their footing, I think, with Andy. But I think the thing that only the only negative thing that it has I have with The Office is that it should have ended a little earlier. And I think that I don't I just don't like when shows in general bring in fake tech or fake things when they try to do the iPad and it's like the triangle thing with Nelly. They only do that for a little bit, and that stuff annoys me. But besides that, and again. Small complaint, second favorite show of all time. My one complaint, and that's it. And but it's so good. I mean, I especially seasons uh, three through or sorry two through five are like ten out of ten, and then uh, six and seven are are great as well. Uh, one I would lump in there with in the great seasons, and then eight and nine are fine. Um, but my God, it is so funny. It's so good. It blows me away when people lump in eight and nine as the same quality. I think eight is so much better than nine. I think oh, yeah? eight is as good as I think one through eight are all exceptional. And then nine is a lot worse. And it's interesting. We've talked a lot about consistency. And here we have probably the least consistent show, like the dip between how good it is and how bad it is. Like it is actively bad at times in season nine and it's still yeah. all of our number one show yeah not even because the highs are so much debate. higher than I the know. lows you it know it's unbelievable how good a show has to be yep. to be our number one despite how bad season nine is at times and it is just characters and storylines you know yeah. earlier when you were mentioning rooting for another character or love interest i was like yeah i was a really big roy guy like <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah right but um you know it just the, those character dynamics and you know when jim goes to uh stanford uh, for in season three, it just opens up that whole new cast of characters, and you didn't really think it was going to work, but it really, really does. Mm-hmm. And then not only that, but then you know, season four I think is so underappreciated because it's so much shorter than the rest. But because of the writer's strike, there's only twelve episodes versus twenty four, and it's still so good. It's so I love those characters combining. You know, Stanford coming back to uh to uh, uh my God Scranton, um, and it's. It just is so good time after time in this characters, and it's so revolutionary too in what they were doing in the mockumentary style. Um, and you know, it's not the first mockumentary because it's based off of the UK office, but the UK office, I, I mean, I know people love it. It's people say it's the one of the, it's it's better. It's one of the um, best comedies of all time. But I I don't love the UK office. It's got the cynicism to it um, without the heart. I think. Um, and you know, gr- a lot of great actors in that show too. But man, the the, the US office made it. It's something. It's entire. It, it's it, it's its own thing without having. Even though it's a remake, it's like, you know, leaps and bounds above. This was what I was trying to get at the entire time when I talk about like dips in quality, but yeah. still not really a dip in quality. Yes, when Michael Scott leaves, it's the not show... when Michael Scott leaves. It's when it's season nine because Robert California was great. Yes, I loved the stuff with him. I agree. That's what I'm saying. When when Michael Scott leaves, the show is it's different. 
but it's not bad. The show it maintains it's it's just as good as it was with Michael Scott. It's just different. And like, yes, he's a very specific type of character. Um, so you don't get like some of the same jokes that you do with other people. Um, and then they try to fill that void a little bit with Andy by making him a little more Michael-ish and like people don't like that. And like, yeah, you can kind of tell it's forced at parts, but it's still funny though. Like it's it to me, it still works. The show doesn't miss a beat. I know some people who say like, oh, I stopped watching after Michael left. And at first I used to be like, oh, yeah, I totally get that. But now I'm like, I don't get that. That doesn't make sense. You should go back and watch it because it is still very, very good. You should, especially the stuff with Robert California, because Michael leaves at the end of season seven. And then it's Robert California for all of season eight. And then he leaves at the beginning of season nine. And then I think it starts to dip in quality. But it is so it's such a disservice when you and Matt both said it's just when Michael Scott leaves that it's the quality dip. It's not. It's. Season nine is when it started dipping. It's, it's it's just a mile marker. It's a point in time that you can point to to be like, oh, I think this is where it happened because Michael Scott is such a beloved character. Going off of uh, uh, Ron Swanson and Andy, I think Michael Scott is probably one of the best characters in all of television. Mm-hmm. He's so stupid, but yet he's oddly lovable, even though like you don't know why. Like he has every reason to hate him, but you don't. Um, yeah, it's the one go. Of, it's the best show of all time. It is, and it's one one of one of the most heartfelt lines and a moment you can laugh at so hard and cry at at the same time is at is in the finale at Dwight's wedding and Michael shows up you know you know that Jim is going to he can't be his best mentra or whatever it's called um bestest bench thank you bestest bench. and so I you he, he can't be that because it has to be older and so when you see Michael Scott it just brings a tear to your eye because how old and gray he looks you know it's obviously presumably steve Carroll was dying his hair for the role blah blah, blah. but it was so s- depressing steve to see Carroll that. has been aging backwards actually since the office started. yes he literally <laughs> and then uh and then you know just him saying michael you came and then michael scott saying that's what she said and that's basically one of his only lines in the reunion besides mm-hmm. what he says it's like all your kids grow up and marry each other like two great lines and it makes you laugh and makes you cry at the same time it's so good and i remember uh max uh, myself and then our wives, we all watched the finale together over the summer because every, you know, a great memories that we all found out we loved The Office in early 2012. So from there on, we watched every single episode of The Office together. Um, and so when the finale happened, when we were over on summer break, we went to your parents' house and we all watched the finale together. That's something I'll I'll remember, uh, not only because it was a great moment, but for some reason I wore a tank top that day, which I have never worn in my entire life. <laughs> and I was so cold. Don't know why I did it. <laughs> I have no memory of that. I feel like I would rec- I'd remember you in a tank top. Well, I'm glad you have no memory of that because I was there too and Matt seemed to forget. Were you really? Part. I lived at my parents' house in that time. Yeah. Oh. I remember watching the office. Yes, I was there. You wouldn't have even been at college, so you would have had to have been there. <laughs> Man. I'm not missing the office. And Jake Pastor was finale. there too. Jake- I, uh, I'm going to have to clip this part and send it to a family friend of ours. She was our um, childhood babysitter because she's uh, I think like 10 years older than one of our older brothers or so, but uh, I'm sure Robin, she'll love she, hearing this. She uh, <laughs> I'll let that part out. <laughs> uh, my parents were going out of town for a couple of days and so she was coming to watch us and uh, she brought over uh, some seasons of The Office on DVD and I think it was just like seasons one through three because it was still very early on yeah. and she was like kind of like showing me them but she didn't really think I was going to like them because I was still kind of young at the time like I think I was like an eighth grade or like seventh grade around there or something and she like put it on and I, I like really liked it and she was like yeah but we, we don't have to watch it like it's fine we can watch anything else and I was like no no this is fine I kind of <laughs> like this show and like it, it kept going and like I think I watched like seasons one through three within like a two day span or yeah. something and then um, I think season four had like just come out or something because I remember like as soon as she left, I bought season four on DVD and then I watched that. <laughs> it's yeah. great. I have a lot of good memories associated with that show. Yeah, me too. It's, I mean, how could it be all of our number ones by such a large margin? That's crazy. It is. And now we have to talk about two more number ones as well. <laughs> yeah. Luke, what show do you like better than The Office? <laughs> uh, my second favorite show behind The Office, Ted Lasso. I've frequently been victim of recency bias in Star Wars and in other things in my life, but I've already rewatched Ted Lasso once. And it, I mean, it came out, what, 2020, 21, 22, maybe 21, 22, ended, 23. Yeah. yeah, it like just ended. Um, and it's perfect. It is just such a good show. Such the right mix of heart and comedy. It's absolutely hilarious. And when it... And, I don't know. I can't recommend it enough. Have you guys seen it? I figure you haven't because it wasn't on your list. And I have not. Yeah. No. I don't know. You you would love it. It's 
it's everyone the says that show. it's high up on my list of things to watch, but I just I haven't gotten around to it. You would love it. I mean, I'm not gonna. This episode's running long, and there's not much more I can say other than how much I like it. But please watch it. That's my official recommendation. That's not Star Wars. Well, and my number one isn't also going to be nearly as uh, uh, strong as it was for The Office. So mine is Seinfeld. Yeah, I think baby. Seinfeld realistically is the second best show ever. Um, I think it is also very smart. Um, obviously, it was run by Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David, which is why I also like Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, but it's a show where they had a lot of control. So it was like a lot of themselves coming through. And it's just it's so smart. Every episode uh, has these different arcs going through and then they all weave together at the end. And, and what's always just a, just a crazy way. But it's it's funny. It's revolutionary. And it kind of sets the the mold for sitcoms after it. I mean, it really did change the landscape. I think it's, isn't it still like one of the most watched uh, uh, episodes, sitcom episodes ever watched was the season finale, finale? or something Yeah, like there's that. like a picture of people watching it in Times Square. They were broadcasting yeah. it in Times Square. Seinfeld, it's a show about nothing and it's so, f- it's so funny. I've seen that I picture before too of the people watching it in Times yeah. Square and I never believe it. That feels like propaganda. I believe that that happened <laughs> but like if you really wa- wanted to watch Seinfeld, you'd go home and watch it. That's just People going about their lives, but like, that's the thing, though. Even what the hell is this? Now? Even the people that didn't prioritize it, even the people that didn't yeah. want to watch it, they were like, "Oh gosh, it's ending!" Like I should stop it's, and watch this for a second. Yeah, because that's just how big it was. It was just a different time before we all had, we you know, we haven't really had anything like really since Game of Thrones that were really ever, the, was a cultural phenomenon, um, TV show wise. But back then, you know, there, it was just a huge deal when something like that ended because it was one of the biggest shows of all time. Same thing with Friends, you know, that was. A huge deal in 2004 when that ended too. It was just like everyone like stopped, you know, uh, to to watch it just because it was like a cultural thing. And it's like, especially at the time, you're like, when am I gonna be able to watch this next? You know, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go buy a VHS of a season. Like DVDs weren't really a thing yet. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Seinfeld is so funny. It's the perfect combination. Uh, my favorite character in Seinfeld, I think, is Elaine. I think she is so funny. Wow, that's a hot take. I I love Elaine. I think she's so great. And underappreciated, and it's just the way, it's not even what she does, it's the way she says things is so funny to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, she's missing, in the in the pilot episode, she's not in it, um, and I think it, she's a strict improvement, uh, you know, going after that. I think she really mends the, the glue. She is, the, I think, the glue, because it's like, Jerry and George all day, you can watch them do anything. But then Kramer, but then the three of them, it works, but then we throw Elaine in. It's the perfect combination of characters, I think, too. Yeah, she she is a great comedic actress, Julia Louis Dreyfus. She's also in Veep, which I also had as my, uh, I think number seven or eight. I had yeah. that very high up. It's there, so too. good. Um, yeah, she's fantastic. But I mean, Kramer or George are definitely my favorite characters. I mm-hmm. think they're absolutely hilarious. But, um, yeah, Seinfeld. It's, it's a great. great show. Yep, my number seven or six. This is my number six. Sorry, seven was Sunny. But at the end of the day. It's the office. The office yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just we just had to get there. In yeah, time, man, so. we really should. I should have went last since we all knew that we all agreed that we no, had I was trying to get there as soon as possible. <laughs> we were yeah. just trying not to talk about the office for the first hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, because everything we were saying about Parks and Rec, I was like, I also have a lot of things, but it really has to do with the office too. But uh, yeah, Parks and Rec. It's I always go back and forth between Parks and Rec and the Office between which one I like more. But at the end of the day, it's the Office. Yeah, clearly because you like Community better than Parks and Rec. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like a lot of things better than Parks and Rec. It wasn't on my top five. It solidifies it. Yeah. All right. Um, but anyway, that's um, that's our opinions on sitcoms. Let us know what you think. Let us know if there are any TV shows that we didn't say that you think should have been added. Uh, and let us know. You can reach out to us across social media at Force for Thought. And you can email us at forceforthought at gmail.com. And let us know if you have any other ideas for a more for thought. If you hear us talk about Star Wars every week and you're like, I wonder what they think about this thing. Let us know. Because... I don't know. I, yeah. I, if you're if you're curious. Yeah, and we'll file it under duly noted. <laughs> if you want to hear me and Matt talk about early 2000s ska music, Ooh. I promise you we have enough content to fill. We're talking real big fish. We're talking mustard plug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna keep going, but I feel like I should probably stop. No, I'm just I'm trying to think of how to segue out now because you're the one who has to say see ya, Sammy. So I'm trying to think of something to say to lead into that. So anyway, let us know what you think. See ya, Sammy. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Nailed it, nailed it. (laughs) We'll cut around that. Doing a ska version of our outro song. (laughs) 